So now in this video we will just going to have a look about HBase architecture. So how you know that in our Hadoop first of all you all aware about that from the last video you understand like Hadoop on top of Hadoop you have a database called HBase. So to get start with HBase first you have to start Hadoop guys. So your name node and the data node should be running then only you can start your HBase. So let me give you that architecture let us say this is your uh, let us say this is your cluster in your cluster what are the things you will going to have right look at this here this might be your cluster. So in your cluster you should have name node you should have name node. So in your HDFS it is a name node and you will going to have some data nodes this is your data nodes ok. So name node and you will have a data node 1 and a data node 2 and a data node 3. So what you going to do right you will start your Hadoop cluster. So usually administrator will start your Hadoop cluster. So where he will going to run that command he will run the command in the name node. So he will log into the name node and he will say bin start dfs.sh. So he starts your hdfs file system when it start what it will do here in your Hadoop master only you will going to have a master file and also you will have a slave files. So who are the slaves attached to this cluster it will read from this slave file and it will start your data nodes. So we all aware about this approach how the daemons will get started daemons are nothing but here the processor running on the JVM. So we started our HDFS as I spoke to get started with HBase first you have to start with HDFS now you have to start HBase. So in your HDFS this is the master and these are the slaves data nodes are the slaves. So in the similar way your HBase works on top of Hadoop so it also should have some master and some slaves. So in the HBase the master is called HMaster in HBase the master is called HMaster and the slaves look at this here in your H in your cluster HMaster can be on a separate machine name node can be on a separate machine but your HBase have a shell have a slave and that slave should be on top of your storage slave like data nodes. So you should have a uh, something on a data node understand right. So your HBase is going to have a slave that is called region server you will say region servers. So region server 1 I will tell you why they are called region servers region server 2. So the region servers will write the data onto the data nodes understand right. So the region servers these are all the slaves your HBase will going to have a master called HMaster and will going to have a region slaves as in a region servers. So in your HMaster only you will going to have another file called region servers. So in the region servers you will going to mention what are the IP address of the region servers you have. So whenever you going to start uh, your HMaster it will read your region server files and it will going to invoke the region servers on the particular data nodes. So the command to start your HBase is bin start hbase.sh. Once you start this HBase what that will do right it will just go into invoke your HMaster here and invoke your region servers on top of your data node. So if someone writes the data okay you have to interact with your H name node and get the locations which data nodes are free then the HMaster will going to invoke on that region servers. So here for name no for your Hadoop HDFS you will going to have a master called name node and slave is called data nodes for your HBase you will also going to have a master and slaves that master is called HMaster and slaves are called region servers. So why you call that as a region servers? simply you know that when you create a table you are create you are dividing the table into a column families what was the column families the column family is here is called personal if you want to understand what is column family and all the things please refer the previous video so this is personal and this is called official let us say everyone here you got right now two column families which means you divided the data into two parts two subgroups earlier 
in rdbms if you see that the single table was stored as a uh, the employee table will store as an a single table now the table got divided into a uh, two parts if i ask personal details i have to use that column family and it will access only that column family if i ask official details it will go into uh, access that only official details so when i create the table what will happen right these are called column families column families are the logical name actually okay so the column family this is column family one this one is a column family when i create a table hmaster will say that hey personal column family go to this region server and official column family it will go into route to the particular region servers which are free okay so right now this region server is not much busy with other tasks so it is free what hmaster will do it creates a column family data and stores in this region so here a column family is nothing but a region here a column family is nothing but an a region so a column family can have a multiple regions remember here so you will going to have all the personal details here so look at this here so in your any architecture so whenever you create an a table in hbase what will going to happen one region may get stored in this region and uh, that this column family is called as in a region and this is what called an another region let's say personal table so this is called a region so like that if i create another table called create college college and marks and students let's say this is the column family called marks and this is the column family called students so this marks and students are column family and of course when you give this one to hmaster and he will create another column family called marks so this slave your hbs slave can store multiple column families or you can call them as a regions actually multiple regions of multiple tables so that is the reason why this slave which manages the regions that is the reason they are called as an a region servers okay so let's say the students may go into create an another region here so a single table i mean to say a single slave can have multiple regions of different tables understand right so here a column family is nothing but an a region so that is the reason why your slave is called as an a, a region server okay so the demo names in your hbase is what your hmaster and region server we will talk about the internal architecture in the uh, classes in detail so this is what the top level thing okay so now let's see here how actually a data flow in your hbase or in your any no in any your column oriented databases first let's have a look usually get start with rdbms usually in rdbms how the data will flow right look at this here usually whenever you write the data a step 1 it writes the data to the database directly when you write the data we all aware about that yes the data is committed as this is a highly available thing you don't worry about the data losses but background there will be a backup will be stored what will be then right when you write the data at the same time that query that you have written right will be stored into the memory this is called mem store you call it out at the same time when you write the data the data will be writing into the mem store as well and after that this mem store memory got filled up and it will flush it as a logs it will flush it in the logs so that is the second step and the first step when you write the data the data will write into the database as well as the memory this is what happens in the traditional database ways of course we don't know this actual things but background it will happen understand right so whenever that memory got filled up it flushes at as an logs and the first step when you were writing the data it will write the data so this is what actually happens in traditional databases but right now on the distributed models this process is not going to work why this approach is going to be a failing not failing actually what will happen right let's assume that i have written some data called ravi here the same data was written here as well assume that if it is if i follow it on a distributed model in a distributed models i will use low end machines if i use low end machines i have written the data into one of the machine called ravi so if that machine lost what will going to happen i lost the data and also the ram will also lost you will also lost the data understand right so you are providing backup after writing the data in a rdbms but i don't want that approach we don't want to do that one approach why because if i lose that machine if i lose the database i lost the data 
So, instead this approach should be reverse in your uh, distributed H base models. What it has to do right first to take a backup means write the data into logs first understand right whenever you write the data write the data into the logs first even if I lose the database I can get the data in this case if I lose the data the data was still in the memory will be lost you do not get the data into the logs. But why RDBMS is following that approach? Why? Because RDBMS never fails. Here RDBMS data is a highly available machine. You do not see the data loss there. But whereas in the distributed model, when we go to the distributed model, you will see the data will lost at any time because of some network issues. So, at that time you should get that data what you lost from that machine. So, to do that you have to perform the backup first that is called logs. So, this is what called actually in HBase called val write a head log. So, at the same time the data will be writing to the mem store as well at the same time the data will be writing to some memory as well ok. So, in the very first step first the data will be writing to the val and in the same time it will write the data into mem store as well and after reaching a certain limit the mem store will flush it as an a database file understand right. So, that is exactly opposite to the traditional databases. So, this is called second step. So, that is what happens in our H base what will going to happen whenever you write the data after reaching a certain limit it will flush it as a database file understand right. So, this file name is called H file actually H file is nothing but indexed HDFS file. So, then again it will free again you will write the data again it reaches certain limit again it will going to flush us it out. So, it is keep on flushing always it keep on flushing. So, what will happen every limit it will going to create a H file that is going to be a big problem in while you are performing reads. So, why your H base data will be faster insertions because it insert the data directly into the RAM. Here the data was inserting into the database and the logs got stored here, but right now the data itself is writing into the RAM. So, insertions will be a very faster here and after certain limit what will going to happen it will going to generate a H files after creating an H files you will going to have a problem of reading it. So, what that framework will do right after reaching to certain number of files it will perform something called it will combines that small small h files into a, a big big h files here that process is called that is called third step that is called compaction. The framework will going to compact the data. So, the compaction comes in two flavors one is called minor compaction and the other one is called major compaction. So, in the third step what it will do right whenever after reaching a certain limit. So, what it will do it will going to create as an a H files will going to create as an one big H file and this one also will create as an a big H file is a clear. So, minor compaction will be performed by the framework automatically and then this will be combined as an a major compaction this will be performed by the administrator why because major compaction you might have a question why can't you combine all four H files as a single H file why do you did it small and all these things. Usually minor compaction will be performed by the framework itself really it do not need much resources to combine or to merge. But if you want to merge and merge 4 files that is really need lot much resources is needed here. So, instead what you will do this major compaction will be performed by the H base administrators at non peak hours. He will see when that utilization is very less then he will going to do a major compactions on this, but minor compaction will be performed by the framework itself. Okay. So, in this case what happens let us assume that if I lose one of the machine remember here do not worry if I lost this H file see this val is that when I deleted the data I can retrieve it back. But let us say if any of the machine lost what will happen do not worry it uses HDFS as a file system. So, H base uses HDFS as a file system you might have a question that what happens if one of my H file lost no problem that HDF H file is what? it is a indexed H file which got replicated in 3 locations. So, even you lose one machine do not worry the data was replicated in the another machine and it can go into retrieve it. So, what are the properties that Hadoop is following will be applicable to H base. So, this is how the internal architecture will going to be there for your H base. So, this is what going to happen this is all happens in a single region servers.
this is actually happens in the region uh, servers whenever you write the data in that region server it just going to write the data to the val and then it will going to write the data to the mem store and it flushes it out okay so let's see right now how it's going to happen in the actual actual part okay look at this right now so if you can see that this is what the actual architecture goes look at this right now high level architecture you will going to write uh, your code by using some shells first it contacts H, H master and H master will going to tell that go to one of the region server so this single region server can have multiple regions so that single region server will going to have only one val it will write the data into the val and then it will write the data into the mem store and it will flush it as a H file if you want in detail pictures I have some other pictures as well so look at this here how right will going to happen so when a client writes the data step one what it will do it will goes to first of all it will just go into uh, goes to first of all write a headlock understand right so look at this here whenever you write the data first it will goes to that in the region server and it will go into write to it will write to the write a headlock step one and then at the same time it writes to the mem store after reaching a limit it will flush us it out this is how actually a write will going to happen in our HBase. So, this is a very high level architecture. If you want in detail things about this HBase, you can watch this space. We will be uploading more more videos related to this. Okay. Thank you much.